What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be working on the Mach 1 engine. This is gonna be part three of rebuilding the Mach 1 engine. If you haven't seen part one or two, click up above and watch those first. This is actually a continuation of part number two because it was a little bit longer than I thought it would be. Part number three right here, we're gonna be putting all the parts from the old engine onto the new engine, getting everything ready to put into the car. And then that'll be part number four, putting it into the car. Stay tuned for that, and we're just going to get started. I think I'm going to start with the distributor. I'm just going to unplug spark plug wires and get all these wires ran through the intake. After I get all that done, I'm going to take the distributor out. And then once I get the distributor out, I'm going to get the valve covers off. And then I think I'll take the intake off next. I pulled all the spark plug wires through the intake. I can get the rest of the wiring harness through. Got it out. Now we can pull the distributor. Here we go. I got the distributor off. I'm gonna go ahead and get the valve covers off. I got the other side off already. Now we'll take this side off. Now, I'm gonna try to clean them up as best as I can. I thought about taking them to the car wash and spray them down, but I don't think I'm going to. I'll just wipe them down as best I can. Next, I'm gonna take off the headers. I got both the headers off. These headers aren't that good, but I'm gonna use them still. They warped and they were leaking before, but we'll see if we can fix that. I put the old oil pan back on. I'm gonna set the engine down now so I can take the transmission off and even the intake. But before I do that, I'm gonna take the starter off real quick so it'll be a little bit easier. leaking everywhere but that's all right. I made a mess again. I forgot about the torque converter but I'll go ahead and try to lift this transmission by myself. See if I can do it. Oh. Now I'll take the intake off. The last thing to take off of the engine is a torque converter. Once I take this off, I think I'll take all of this stuff to the car wash to wash. Because I did try to do these by hand. I mean, I got one of them clean, but it took a long time. Especially the oil pan, because that thing is disgusting. I'll have to load all those up, and then we'll take them to the car wash after this. I got all the parts cleaned up now. I, mean, I just need to get the... The gasket surfaces, so I'm cleaning those up with a wire brush. I haven't decided if I want to repaint most of the stuff, the headers, or that stuff, or even this. We'll see about that, but once I get this stuff cleaned up, I'll start putting the valve covers on, maybe the oil pan. We'll just slowly start putting it together. I'm about to start putting everything on the engine together, but I forgot to paint the thermostat housing. Take that off, paint that, and then I'll paint these black. And after that, I should be done with everything. We'll start putting it together. Probably start off, just start with the top, go to the bottom. I still do have to take off the timing cover so I could put the gasket on because I didn't put any of that on. I got the bolts out already. Take this off. I'll clean this up and then we'll get it painted. I got it all painted, and I even put some of the metallic flakes on that too. Now I'm going to start putting new stuff on. First I'm going to start off with the valve covers, we'll clean up this surface. I'm going to reuse these because these are pretty good, and we'll put the new chrome ones on. 
got it pretty clean. I just cleaned it with the brake clean and a rag because I didn't want to mess up the paint on like the edges like this. I didn't want to mess up the paint. Put the new one on and then I'll bolt it up. Got the one side on, it's looking good, but I do need to clean it up a little bit. I'll take the second side off. I got both of them on now. The thermostat housing's all dry, looks good. So we're gonna put it on. Got some RTV here. We'll put some on both sides. Slide it on here. And we'll get the other side. Then we got the thermostat we'll set in here. Just got the bolts to put in. Now that I got that done, we're ready to put the intake on. Take all the tape off. I cleaned off all the surfaces again and I'm gonna spray it out one last time. Got the gasket set here. Put the gasket on. Shows you which side goes to the head. And then these little things hook on. So they stay in place. And this one. Get the rubber ones on, but we're gonna put an RTV all along both sides. I'm gonna put quite a bit on there because I do not want this to leak. Little thing that'll go in that hole right there to center it. Just like that. And then we'll put some on the top. And then we'll get the other side. And we'll start putting the bolts in. Got all the bolts in. We got the bolt pattern right here. We're going to follow that. Just start off with the first one. 10 pounds I'll start off with and then it'll go up to... We'll see how far we go up because last time I uh, torqued this down, it started to cave in the hole because this is an aluminum intake. So we'll go to around 20 pounds, I think. I got them all torqued down to 10. I'm gonna go through the whole pattern again and torque them to 20 pounds. I got all the bolts tightened down and I'll try to wipe off some of the RTV if it's not dry yet, just so it looks cleaner. Got it all done, it's all wiped down. I didn't put the timing cover gasket on, so I'm gonna take all this off, put the gasket on with the timing cover, and then we need to put the fuel pump gasket on. We actually got a new seal so I'll change this real quick too. To take the old one out I'm just gonna use a pry bar probably hit each side and we'll see if I can get it out that way first. Almost got it out. Probably clean it up and then I'll put the new one in. Finally got the seal in I just use this gas cap to hammer it in. Put it on there and we'll put the RTV on both sides. And then we'll put the timing cover back on. Before we put all the RTV on, we want to get ready because I forgot where the bolts go for the water pump and we got to put the water pump on so it all seals evenly. I got them all figured out and I went ahead and numbered them. One, two, three, just all the way from left to right. We'll go ahead and take it off again. I got all the surfaces clean. We're going to put some, some of this Permastex gasket sealer on it.
put some on the other side too. I got it all painted. Set on the timing cover. Start off with these two bolts down here. And then two small bolts on the top. I got the timing pointer on and I got the water pump painted. Put on the gasket and get the other side painted real quick. We'll just put on the top bolt real quick to hold it. And I'm going to put RTV on the, the four outer ones on the bolt threads because those go straight into the water pumps so make sure that they don't leak. I'm going to torque them all down to 15 pounds. I did take off the timing pointer because uh, I couldn't, it wouldn't have been able to get the hose on. The older one was a little bit smaller than this, but either way, I wouldn't be able to read it because the hose would be in the way. We'll just time it by ear. That's what I did last time. So put on the dipstick tube and bolt it in. I'm going to put on the fuel pump. Got the surface already cleaned. Put some... RTV on it just in case it leaks. We just got the alternator bracket and then we'll put on the harmonic balancer right before we put it on. I'll oil this seal up a little bit. I got it oiled up already. Line this up. Tighten it down to 90 foot pounds. I decided that I'm gonna paint the pulleys and the fan blue too. I already got them all scratched up with the scotch bright and I wiped them down. Start painting them all. And then after that, we'll put them on the engine. The pulley's all dry. I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna put on this little water hose and I'll tighten it down. I'm ready to put the oil pan on. I already cleaned the surface pretty good. Just like this. Make sure these side things suck in. I'll start off with the big ones that go on the outside. Put them all in and then I'll just tighten them down from the center. One on each side from the center and work out. I got the oil pan all on. It's coming together now. So the next thing to do is I'm gonna paint the headers again. We'll see how good they look this time. I'm just gonna go with black again. I just finished doing the last coat on them. They look pretty good. While those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put the distributor in, hook up all the wires and line them up to the plugs, put the new plugs in and we'll get all the electronic, the wiring harness done. I went ahead and cleaned all the wires up. They're really oily, because the old engine leaked a lot. I put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. Just keep moving and wiggling it, until it'll suck down. Sucked all the way down, now we got the Tightener. We won't tighten it down all the way because we got to time it once we put it in. Start running all the wires and the wiring harness. I was going to put the wiring harness in and I decided to cut it open. I was going to remeasure some of these wires, cut them a little bit shorter. And there's some connectors that don't look that good. So I'm just going to solder all these clothes, even this one too. And then after that, I'll probably tape it all back up and put it in place. I even just found this one. The wires are just tied together. They're not even soldered or anything. I got all the wires soldered up and I put new ends on them and it's all organized. I got the loom all on it. I'll start feeding it through. Got the wiring harness all in. I got a new coil coming. It'll be here in a bit. We're going to start wiring up the spark plug wires. I already got these spark plugs changed and then 
I'm gonna get these on this side. I'm um, spacing them about 40 is what I've seen on the internet. I got the spark plugs in. I put a little anti-seize on them. I've already ran this side, looking pretty good. And then I got the two on the front on this side. The two back spark plugs on each side, I'm running through the intake right here. I got the new coil in. It's all black. And I had to get one of these uh, clip things, soldered that in. It's gonna look a lot better. And then we'll plug in the coil. Yeah, I think that's all the wires. We got them all ran. It looks pretty good. Put in the dipstick. Peel off this. We'll get the headers on. I got the header all clean. I unplugged the spark plug wires. Now we're going to try to bolt it up. I got both the headers on already. Tighten them down pretty tight. I'm gonna put the oil filter on. We're getting on to the last things before we take it off the engine stand. I got the ring all oiled up. I want to trim most of these hoses. We got this PCV right here and I wanna trim that a little. It's a little bit too long. And then fuel line is really long. I don't know why I had it like this, but there's this part right here and that's disconnected from this. So it's like double the length. I got the PCV valve on there and the hose all hooked up. I already chopped this bottom one that goes to a filter and I have the filter right in this little crevice right there so you can't see it. Now I'm gonna chop the hose above the filter. I think it's finally time to take it off the engine stand. So far, I think the only thing I have to do is put the engine to body ground on. I already got the cherry picker hooked up, so I'll just lift it up a little bit, and then I'll start taking the engine stand bolts out. It looks good. I got the engine set down right now on some 2x4s so it won't scratch anything. The old flywheel didn't match up with the transmission because this is a C4 and this has 164 teeth. So I had to get a smaller one and I couldn't use the old one off the old engine because it had a different weight. They have counterbalance so the old one was 28 ounces and the new one should have 50 ounce of counterweight. It all matches to the crank and all that, so they changed the weight on the crank for about 1980 on the 302s. We have this new one right here that I found. We'll bolt that up and it sh everything should work. This has the 50 ounce counterweight. It should match with the crank of the 1992 engine. I'm just going to line it up where the weight was on the other one. I put a little bit of red Loctite on them because it had some on before. I'm just holding the flywheel with the pry bar and I'm going to torque them down to 80 foot pounds. We're going to put the torque converter in. Just spin it till it should go all the way in. We are finally ready to put the transmission on. We got the flex plate on and the torque converter all synced up. I'm gonna try to do it by myself. We'll see if we can do it. We gotta line the bolts up for the torque converter and all the holes for the transmission all at the same time. Before I put the transmission on, I cut the, the hole out for the starter since we're going for a smaller flywheel. That's how the old one was done. Since uh, it has a smaller flywheel, you have to move the starter a little bit closer and also the plate will fit up with the transmission. Now I'm going to try to put the transmission on. I turn the torque converter to where the holes line up with the flex plate. I'm going to try to do this. I got all the bolts of the transmission on. They're not tight yet, but I just wanted to show you guys. The torque converter is lined up. If you can see that bolt in the hole, it's not tight. It's not going through yet because I haven't tightened the bolts. I'm going to tighten the Transmission bolts now so You can see that the bolt is popping through now. I got them all tightened down I didn't find a torque spec. I just tightened them down as hard as the 3 8 DeWalt would go 
Then I put this little clip on for the vacuum line for the transmission. Then we're gonna hook it up to right here. I'm gonna go through the, the intake again also, so it'll look cleaner. We still gotta put the nuts for the torque converter on, so we'll do that. I'll just get it tight for now. When you wanna go on to the next bolt, you're gonna get a ratchet to go over the crank bolt. Push it whichever way you want, doesn't matter, until it lines up just like that. Then you can put that next bolt in. I got the torque converter bolts all torqued down. Now we're gonna put the starter up. Once again, just to get as much stuff as I can on so it'll be easier. When I get the engine in the car, it's gonna be a lot harder. Got the starter all tight, and there's one thing I forgot about, it's these bolts that need to cover the exhaust port, the EGR stuff. So we'll just get those tight, and then after that, I think we'll be all done with everything. I also got the body to engine ground on there. I think this is gonna be the end of this video. It's probably getting pretty long. Has been a long time filming it. We got it all looking good. There is one thing I have to change. It's gonna be the oil pressure sender. I need a little thing that'll make it come out farther because on the 69, it's gonna be a bigger sender. It's not gonna fit in there. That's the only thing I think I have to change on it. Everything looks good. I'm really happy of how it turned out. A few things I would change is uh, I would definitely prime it next time. I don't know why I didn't prime it. Some etching primer, I would do that next time. I might wipe all the chrome down. Besides that, it looks good. Only problem we ran into is with the transmission fitting up with the engine. I didn't think of that. Part number four is gonna be up soon, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, then please like the video. And if you'd like to see more of the Mach 1 or the Cobra, or if you'd like to see part number four when we, I put this engine in the Mach 1, then please subscribe, get those notifications on so you get a notification whenever I post a video. I think that's all, so see y'all next time.